meteorologists, remote sensing analysts, surveyor, town planner, and so on and so forth. This conference has been organized for the student of geography, researcher, and especially young geographer to enable them to gain fresh insight and information that would in turn help them in the being more effective in their professional practices and pursuit. Each subject for this discussion and debate in this course of the two days event was chosen, keeping in mind the interest of the youth. Through this conference, we hope to give each young mind of a platform to evaluate the scope for the improvement and gain a better understanding of the subject, focus on its essential and most relevant aspect and identity, and create opportunities for themselves and others in our rapidly evolving world. On behalf of the organizing committee, I am grateful to all the honorable resource persons, panelists, chairpersons, participants, and paper presenters from various parts of the country and abroad who have made it to the conference. I sincerely hope that the ensuing discussion would enlighten all of us present here on the importance of geography and its relevance in the present situation. I am confident that the fresh insight gathered from the perspective of the speakers will both enrich us intellectually and boost our professional efficiency. Again, on behalf of conference organizing committee, I welcome all our honorable guests, speaker, panelists, all the participants, president, and member of the governing body, the faculty, the non-teaching staff, and all those who have helped us in organizing today event. Uh, thank you all. Thank you all again. I'm really happy uh, to get the invitation in your webinar. And I'm grateful to the Department of Geography, Gon Abdul Ghani College. When I come to know the uh, title of the webinar, I was really overwhelmed because this is very relevant. So I'm really uh, happy uh, by taking part in this webinar where the, so many participants, they have registered themselves. So uh, I'd like to share my experiences. Then uh, this is a floor where we can share our knowledges and experiences. Then uh, now I switch over to my PPT, no? Okay. Now the opportunities and challenges within geography. The art system is a very dynamic process, which could be explained only through geographical approach. The art system comes up with various consequences, both on the physical and socioeconomic attributes. These all could be answered with geographical insight. Now, Within this insight of geographical approach, a newer concept has come up, and that could be designated to be the answer of the trending opportunities and challenges. This is the neo-deterministic approach propounded by Griffith Taylor, an American geographer. Actually, he's an environmental philosopher, and in his proposition, he mentioned that it's a stop and go and stop for a while. And you think whether you are right or wrong, your advancement, whether it is in the right track or it creates some new problems for the future generation. So this is a challenge for a geographer and geography is the subject 
who can see and understand and handle these problems or the outcome of this part. Now, uh, I would like to take some examples from my experience. I like to show some slides and there where the geography lies and the role of geography or knowledge of geography, how it can be uh, controlled that part that I'm talking about. You see, uh, from the term desert, we can imagine the vast stretches of sand. But these arid parts of the arts plays a very vital role in system dynamism. But the economist, the planner, the agro scientist uh, ignored this and started to convert these vast stretches into irrigable land. Is uh, I got it from Sahara Desert on the peripheral part of Sahara Desert, uh, we are going to start the agriculture and we converted the land from desert land to agriculture land. For that, we divert the Nile River through canals and we initiate some sprinkler irrigation and we invest huge money to provide irrigation in those lands. But being a geographer, I was not satisfied or not happy with this approach because the every desert has it's a great role in the total art system dynamism if we convert the desert into agricultural land if we paint the yellow desert into green color then the future will be uh, there in the future we will have uh, some new problems because we are uh, very much eager to change the Inter environmental setup. And similarly, uh, the vast salty marshes of Rana of Kutch is a very well known of being the very vital geographical component, as well as home to a wide varieties of migratory birds and its own biotic components, mentionably the wild asses. <laughs> And you see that uh, thousands of thousands of tourists are coming to enjoy this environment, the wide open flat land. From uh, the entire flat land is vineyard with a salt crust. And from there, we are getting the natural salt. We are preparing natural salt. This is a natural endowment. And the, this salt has a very good market, potential market in the rest of the world. Uh, but in recent years, in recent years, uh, there has been an enormous encroachment of settlements within these salty mars in the name of the land reclamation. What I noticed, I was there with a the team. Uh, the what team. I noticed there, Marsi land is reclaimed and gradually encroaching the Marsi land, and we are going to set up some rural areas. And what is the result? Not only this, the demand for electrification, the high voltage electric poles are being installed to meet the ever increasing demand. These have been done without understanding this region's dynamism, what I'm talking about, the system dynamism, and ignoring the region importance. And you see that uh, this is the, what am I? This, is the, this is the home of a huge varieties of migratory birds. Huge varieties of migratory birds. And these migratory birds generally follow a particular path during their migration. But as we set up a number of the electric pole, as a result, that those electric poles kill the hundreds of birds. Those are the flamingos, the migratory birds. So my question is that the, before setting up this electric high tension electric pole, we must consider the geo-environmental situation of that part. By ignoring this, we are killing 
the hundreds and thousands of migratory birds. The, it should be new, new deterministic approach with which the upcoming challenges should be determined before taking the further steps. Next is, that is, Asana Kama? Yeah. Oh, sorry, that is not operating. Mm. Mm. Next is, that is the sinking of RLC. You see, the, I visited that, visited that part uh, last year. What I noticed, the RLC with an area of 68,000 square kilometer, the sweet water sea, RLC is not the saline water sea, this is the reservoir of the sweet water, and this 68,000 square kilometer area is gradually turns into desert. In 1940s, just 60, 80 years back, uh, the, the Stalin constructed irrigation canals that begins on a large scale irrigation, and he wanted to divert the water from the Amudurya and Siddurya for the adjacent agricultural fields to produce the cotton. And as a result, the RLC is not going to get water from Amudurya, Siddurya, and the, sea, the entire sea is gradually started to sinking. And the countries like the Uzbekistan, Kazakhstan, and other countries, and there is a great tussle between the position of that uh, RLC. And then later, uh, in the year 2014, they declared the RLC dries up and becomes now that is known as the Aralkum Desert. You see the photographs of three consecutive uh, decades that is a uh, 2000 extreme left hand side you see the real photo a uh, real map of the rlc in 2000 and after 2007 the rlc is gradually sinking and 2014 the a oh, small strip of water was there and when i went there in the year 2019 i never saw i would not see any water strip within this rlc part so uh, with the people with our ignorance, we just convert a, a sea uh, to a desert. So there is a question and there is a challenges for a geographer. And the same is true in the case of the Chath Lake, which was 23,000 square kilometer in 1960s, about 60 years back. Now only 1,400 kilometers square kilometers remaining and enter part and total Chath Lake is dried out because in the upper catchment area, we construct a number of dams uh, which restrict the water to flow into this Chath Lake. Now, this is the new deterministic approach on irrigation and channel diversion. You see, this is the Moira River in the central part. And to supply water in other parts of agricultural fields of Birbhum particularly, and we divert the water through canals. And as a result, we see at present, the lower part of that barrage, the Tilpara barrage, the lower part of Moiraki is turns into a desert, that is a strip of desert. And one of my scholars, she did her PhD on this issue, and she came to know by interacting with the farmers that the farmers are now very much interested to irrigate their agricultural fields with the help of the shallow tubel and deep tubel, they never take like to take any water from the canals because canals uh, are not getting water because the uh, water is diverting and evaporating and leaking in upper catchment area. That's why. So this is another problem that uh, we are going to uh, uh, start a program without considering the geographical components and environment of that particular area. So this is a challenge for a geographer and try to establish the knowledge of geography and the field of geography uh, in those planning process. Now, you see, the, I'd like to quote the statement of great Nobel laureate Rabindranath Tagore. In the year 1907, he delivered in his lecture that uh, he said, the, let the river flows. 
don't used up all its water for your bathing, drinking, and growing your autumnal rice. That means you don't used up the water. Let the river flow, though it has no uh, sign great significance uh, from the point of view of the economic gain, but it has a significance in maintaining its flow. You see that uh, 2000, in the first of this century, that uh, one word is uh, getting in our, one uh, getting its position in environmental studies, that is the uh, e-flow. E-flow means environmental flow. Just imagine, uh, 100 years back, he was talking on this issue, that the let the river flow, though it has no significance for, or getting any profit from the economic point of view, but it has a great significance in maintaining its flow. That means e-flow is an environmental flow. And moreover, the Tagore was terribly against the putting up the big dams. And this, in, during that time, he wrote uh, so many articles, poems, and even one drama that is Muktodhara. And that was totally against the big dam. And you see that 2004, there was a world summit on against the big dam. And in that summit, we took several you know, resolutions to decommission the major dams of the earth. And fortunately, in the year uh, 2007, 2008, uh, so many uh, big dams were decommissioned. And still today, the thousands of thousands of big dams are under decommission process. Now, you see, I come to this point that is the unclosed. Recently, in the search of the resources, man has a, a man has started acquiring the deep sea basins as well. In this context, there have been several geographical issues that has resulted in the formation of UNCLOS. UNCLOS means the United Nations Convention on the Law of the Sea. The countries, those who are in and around the North Sea, they notice that the North Sea is full of resources. And the countries like the United States, Canada, uh, Russia, the northern uh, countries of Europe, that is the Denmark, Norway, Sweden, all they were, they tried to grab the more resources from the North Sea. And that's why they enter into the North Sea and they started to collect the resources from the sea bottom. And the rest of the world, we noticed that. And then we, the Indian and other countries, we wrote to UNO, United Nations, they arranged a meeting in the year 1972. Later in the 1982, uh, there is a convention initiated by UN, United Nations, uh, that is, there must be some restriction uh, for uh, taking resources from the ocean floor of the North Sea. And in that part, the UN invite the geographers and geologists because uh, we know from our knowledge, from the geographical knowledge and geological knowledge, that this North Sea is comprises or uh, characterized with the 18 plates, the continental plates, 18 plates. And out of these 18 plates, uh, eight belonging to Russia and four for Canada and Denmark, USA, Norway, Finland, uh, one plate each for each country. And according to the position, they can share the resources. And resources that is from the coast to 200 nautical miles inside the sea. And beyond that, the central part, which is uh, in this map, you can see, uh, that is for the rest of the world. Nobody can acquire any resource from that particular area. So therefore, here are the challenges of a geographer and the geography can, uh, geographers can say for this. Now come to the opportunities. Uh, keeping in mind the geographical approach, the present day challenge is very much associated with water crisis. And this water crisis has become a 
uh, from the injudicious utilization of the river. The, in purview of neo-deterministic approach, being a geographer, it has been an opportunity to find out the source point of a river and acknowledge the importance of such a dynamic system on our dear earth. And this landscape is a landscape of a Bihar village, and it has no attraction for the tourist or any other point. But when you come to know that this area is a source area of a river named the Ojoy, then it gets its importance from the point of view of geography, from the point of view of uh, tourism, from the point of view of the economic upliftment, and all this. So this is the point. And uh, I took some geographers, and under my supervision, a group of geographers went there, and we find out the spot, and we install a marker stone there, and that is this is the marker stone. Uh, we installed in that village, the Salva village, and you see that this marker stone attracts the people and uh, from in and around villages. And in that marker stone, we wrote that in recognition of man nature attachment, this stone is placed at Salva village as a source point or source area of river Oja. And ultimately, uh, the people of the local areas, they used to come and see, and this turns into a tourist spot. And recently, we made a survey, and now we get information that the people from well away from uh, nearby urban centers, and even from abroad, they are coming and enjoying this point as a source. This is the opportunities for a geographer. And this uh, marker stone is recognized by the BBC Art. And that is the uh, point because you see that I got this idea when I went there in uh, Southern Star, one village um, of uh, England, there is a source of river Thames. And there, uh, from there I got this idea and I started this program with my uh, colleagues and friends and students, I set up the five river, five such marker stones in five rivers of Bengal, Jharkhand, or Bihar, that is Ajoy, Kunur, uh, Kopai, Kumari, and Karola. And you see that uh, one statement made by a villager, it is quoted in uh, BBC Art, that is the uh, one villager told me now that you have placed this marker stone, maybe one day lots of tourists from far away places will come to my village. My children will see them, then they will be inspired to go out and see the world. You just imagine, this is a statement of a old woman of that village, of the Sarwa village. So this is the opportunity or the untouched uh, you know, areas for geography, so we can uh, uh, we can, uh, you know, create the new job opportunities. We can initiate or uh, find out some new tourist spots. And by this way, this is the geography. And this is my last part, that is, it would uh, like to conclude that this ever increasing demand in the modern day is resulting towards the several challenges. From the viewpoint of geography, there are several opportunities still left to reorient human demand, just like UNCLOSE. The United Nations must come to the front, forefront in making convention on the law of the demand, which could come as the UNCLOSE, the United Nations Convention on the Law of the Demand. No? Uh, that means, uh, just for example, uh, if we take Bangladesh as an example, uh, we can, with the geographer or the environmental scientist, we can estimate how much water that country, that nation has uh, by analyzing its water, its under, underground water, river flow, atmospheric water. So we can estimate the total uh, water available in that country. Now, if we divide the total population of that country, then we can find out the per capita, uh, you know, 
uh, water, one man can utilize this much of water of that country. If he wants to utilize more water, then he is crossing the limit, crossing the threshold. And that brings the new you know, problems or hazards in the environment. And this is only possible through inclusion of the geographical knowledge in resource orientation. The per capita natural resource, if we estimate, and then we can control the demand of the nation. And the entire lifestyle outline within and defined available natural resources. So at the last, I would like to say that it would be an appeal to the present day scientists to use such geographical approach earth system dynamics. If we understand the earth system dynamics, then we can restrict our activities, we can channelize, we can make our activities more scientific, more environmental friendly. Okay, thank you all, uh, thank you. We would now like to uh, welcome Professor R.B. Singh to deliver the keynote address. Dr. Singh is a professor of geography at the Delhi School of Economics. Uh, he has also served as UG UGC research scientist and is presently chair, Research Council of Central Food Technological Research Institute of Mysore. A very warm welcome to you, sir. Well, thank you, Dr. Ismail, for this very important meeting you are organizing. Geography is a discipline and challenges and opportunity and you are able to bring so many people, these people, Professor Malay Mukhopadhyay, Professor Chahid Palimiya, Professor Asi Sen, many colleagues I, uh, I could recognize here, Professor Ranjan Basu, Professor Din Siddiqui, Professor Aya Siddiqui, Professor Atiku Rahman, Professor Nayak, different colleagues from the college age and a student. First important achievement I would like to give you, and we heard a very important lecture by Professor Malay Mukhopadhyay about the several type of exploration. So I just uh, you can see my title, Geography, IGU, and Indian Geography. You know, as you, we heard from Professor Mukhopadhyay about the various type of exploration, discovery, and he traditional several type of approaches he mentioned. In this context, I first use knowledge for through the concept of a space, time, a space, and a spacing, time, and deterministic approach, or the higher association of the two. He talked, in the title talk was geography as human ecology. And he mentioned about the time, space, particularly in the urban context. And centric perspective on the transformation of rural ecology, urban landscape at a variety of levels, from local, regional to the national level. Broadly, you know, I would like to introduce that our focus includes a special temporal analysis of the key challenges. What key challenges? I would like to put the word global key challenges, food, energy, water, biodiversity, mega cities, health, management, and security. And in context, we used to bring the several type of approaches like space informatics or geospatial technology. 
we can promising prospects and making the geography more market oriented. That is very, very important could be the ansia for India's development and also for the uh, developing country. You know, on 4th to 7th, we are all geographical society of India presenting their you know view organized by the geographical society. And we have also international geographical union, a type of umbrella organization at the international level. Non-governmental professional organization and devoted to the development of discipline of geography. And generally we promote geography through initiating and coordinating research and teaching in countries of the world. Every two years we have regional conferences and every four years we have the international conferences. And really this we use to facilitate the participation of geographers in the global community of scientists through its formal affiliation as a member union of Internet Science Council. So, first important aspects I would like to highlight. The geography used to highlight national challenges for the society. And in this context, First, I would like to start with the few important initiatives taken at the global level. In 2015, global community signed the risk reduction, what it is called the Sendai Framework of Disaster Risk Reduction. On 25th December 2015, we signed develop goals. So that is why now geography has emerged, geography as a source as a sustainability science. In December 2015, India and other countries also in the Paris climate action. And for, you know, under the umbrella of IGV, we discuss the interaction so our Indian geographer also identified interactive areas. Like in IU, we have General Assembly, Security Committee, Commission and Study Groups. We have 41 Commission and Study Groups and three task forces related to different field of geography and even changing areas. Opportunity engaged for geographers, geographers to participate. They write to the chairman of the different commission and they associate. No, I don't have any or any key for that. Only two works to the or in case of India, you know, Indian National Science Academy, but other anyone can join the member without any fee. You can see the member countries. But I will just in this whole IU activity, we have not much. Uh, uh, adequate participation from South, uh, Asian developing countries, a very important strategy, particularly for covering the challenges and opportunity. What it is called the IGU strategy or political strategy to participate in coordination of research, discussion of their results of major international documents on global and regional problems of sustainable development. 
So this is a very, very important challenge. It is an integration technical geography in an international governmental organization and, state and the national level contribute to its better visibility for decision makers and business community in society at large. So, IGU should play a leading role in territorial and environmental research. And so, the, like our Indian geographical society. We should promote geography in its better integrative and international media space. And geography is that we can promote resilient science application. How we promote, you know, capacity building, creating awareness about our different global and national changes. And in this context, the geographical education and response. Two I on conceptual development of geography. Geography is a multidisciplinary science. We explore how environment emerge by natural processes. How the people like huge and environments. Uh, several examples you have seen from Professor Mokopadhyay. How society, you know, themselves are influenced by the environment in which they are located. The heritage, very important concept brought before us by Richard Hass, the aerial differences. Space and time. I would like to go to six stage and three important book I would like to refer. The of, you know, Club of Rome was a very specific idea. And they told that the you know population is increasing a very faster road urbanization in increasing technological development is taking place and now we have the problem of survival but it was a very overreaction then the second important group of people and and mankind and the turning point it was a more optimistic idea, and they mentioned that we have still and hello, and so that is why geography aims to study both focusing on a space, places, and region, addressing and questioning both short term and long-term processes and a resulting pattern. So, you know, what you are getting here, that contribution of geography to knowledge is in focus on a space and environment and in principle notion for a study. That is the important notion. Since a space is a basic dimension. I request uh, to next. Uh, presenter or our special guest, uh, Dr. Ashish Kumar Sen, uh, founder of founder and head of the Department of Geography at the Alia University, will be deliver the special uh, lecture in this session. Please, sir, warm welcome you to sir. Please, sir. Good morning, honorable teacher in charge, Professor Shaila Limia of Divan Abdul Ghani College respected patron in chief professor molay mukhopadhyay department of geography vishwabharati shantiniketan respected keynote speaker professor 
R. V. Singh of Delhi School of Economics, distinguished delegates, geographers, and other interdisciplinary guests and virtual and allied sciences. It's a great pleasure and opportunity for me to express my view as a special guest on this two days online conference in geography with the thrust area on the opportunities and challenges of geography as a discipline. In fact, actually, no word is sufficient. No word is sufficient no. enough to acknowledge the. Let me share the uh, PowerPoint. Just uh, so the uh, my topic is uh, the geography concepts, challenges, and opportunities in teaching and research. Now, this is the, uh, within a very short uh, time, uh, it is not possible for me to uh, cover all the uh, aspects. So I have been uh, concentrating on the geomorphic aspects and uh, through a long uninterrupted years of teaching for almost uh, five decades, it's actually more than 46 years, an attempt has been made by, the, by me to unfold the major challenging issues in teaching and research as encountered time to time. And the subject is so vast that I've been concentrating in the field of geomorphology. Next, we all know that geomorphology is a study of landforms and it belongs very much to the branch of art science. And here I have selected some of the uh, important uh, challenges that uh, a teacher and a researcher uh, uh, may face uh, while teaching and uh, doing research in geography. One, one such challenge is that of the application of linear programming in uh, geomorphology. Now, linear programming uh, let, let me cite a very simple example that there are, suppose there are two perennial rivers, R1 and R2, and they are connected with reservoirs X1 and X2. And while we are going to find out the, the discharges uh, during the different season, for that uh, we have selected uh, three uh, distinct uh, periods um, of the year. One is the monsoon month. Uh, the, uh, the period of monsoon month. The second uh, season is that of uh, post monsoon month, and the third is the pre monsoon month. And there we find some variations, and let that be uh, correlated with the example. Now th these are the uh, constraints of. Uh, the equations of the two reservoirs x1 and x2 uh, is equal to 40 cubics, x1 and 2x2 is equal to 80 cubics, 2x1 and x2 is equal to 20 cubics, and x1 and x2 are non negative constraints. Now, while considering these values, when we uh, intend to draw uh, straight lines and intend to plot it on the graphs, we find that this, this will be the result that is coming out uh, in, uh, in graphical plotting. And here we see that uh, this is the A point, B point, C point, D point. A, B, C, D is a region which can be considered as a feasible region. And within this feasible region, A, D is the line where which is considered to be the optimal line optimal solution so this is the graphical plotting uh, of uh, uh, with the help of linear programming and apart from this graphical plotting uh, we can go for uh, uh, the problem of maximization we can go for problem of minimization and we, may, uh, we can also solve the problems of optimal development uh, through the linear programming next i 
uh, come to the consideration of the application of base theorem of geomorphology, which is uh, considered to be another challenge uh, to the geographers. And for that, I have selected a very, very simple exercise uh, that the let R1, R2, R3, and R4 are two uh, for four rivers that experience seven flood and 15 non flood, eight flood and 23 non flood, and 16 flood and 41 non flood, and five flood and 11 non flood years. So this time the flood has occurred in this main river. Now, uh, how can we solve the problem that which river is more susceptible to flood so that we can um, uh, make some proper planning and management with respect to flood uh, control and flood management. Now, this is the value uh, which has been calculated uh, from the uh, uh, application of base theorem. And here we see that R1 and R4, these are the two uh, rivers uh, which has got the uh, highest value of 0 0.27 and 0 0.27. So these two rivers should be given the first priority of planning and management, followed by R2 and R3. Now, the third trust area that uh, I'm concentrating as the geomorphological challenges is the factor analysis in geomorphology. In fact, factor analysis represents the multivariate analysis in uh, geomorphology and uh, for that uh, there are um, different uh, uh, terms and due to shortage of time it is not possible for me to cover up all this but uh, i'm showing you the variables of vulnerability of flood that is the variable one let that be socioeconomic variable two climatic variable three, agricultural, variable four, occupational, variable five, infrastructural, and so on. So, and these are the districts of West Bengal. So when we are uh, plotting the, um, uh, drawing the analysis of factor uh, um, or central method of factor analysis, the step two is the production of correlation matrix, which uh, is, uh, it has been shown by this slide, then followed by step three is that of the computation of the summation of rows or summation of columns in the form of T, and then the root over T representing the uh, centroid uh, to obtain, to, to find out the centroid loading. And this is the final, uh, this is the table where we find that this is the total uh, uh, summation that is uh, 10.464 and the, the root over 10, uh, root over uh, t is uh, 3.235 and on the basis of this value uh, we can obtain, we can find out the first centroid factor. Accordingly, we can find out the second centroid factor, third centroid factor and so on till we get the uh, maximum the possible correlation up to the extent of 99.9%. Uh, uh, so this is these are the steps. Now, the next very important point is that of how we can ma map these uh, factor analysis. Actually, you know that there are a number of softwares you know, which are already available nowadays, such as SPSS, Excel stat, etc. But in these two different softwares, we cannot make some proper uh, mapping of the um, values. And for that, for this purpose, some method of uh, standard score matrix is to be prepared. And the total uh, values of standard score matrix multiplied by the eigen vectors, eigen values will give you the will give us the values. Uh, and on the basis of that, we can make some possible groupings and so on. So these these are the uh, different methods of the different steps of factor analysis. 
analysis and here we come very close to the other two methods that is the principal component analysis and uh, maximum likelihood method of analysis which uh, should require proper uh, consideration uh, depending entirely on the basis of uh, nature of data now next trust area that uh, should be uh, highlighted is that of the emerging concepts in geomorphology. 